And now, ladies and gentlemen, as well, we welcome you back again to our first panel discussion, the outlook for global water security in light of climate change, that I have the honor to moderate. Allow us first to introduce our panelists, and they are Dr. Rupa Kumar Kohli, Professor Mansoor al Mazrui, and uh, Mr. Qais Swedi, and Dr. Saeed Sarbi. Welcome, everyone, and uh, may I hear an OK from you since we're hosting this virtually? I'd like to have a very humble sound check. Can you read me? Yes. 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 How are you? Okay. This is Mansoor. OK. Oh, lovely. All together in union. Thank you. We really appreciate that. I'd like to just make one housekeeping input here for our distinguished audience. We will be going through this panel discussion and an opportunity for questions to be asked will be opened uh, during this panel discussion. Just make sure that you identify yourselves, the entity that you represent, should there be one. And lastly, and more importantly, make sure you dedicate the question to one of our panelists. With that, I'd like to start our promising panel discussion. And my first question is for Dr. Rupa Kumar Kohli. A very good day to you, and thank you for being here with us, as well as all of our panelists. Let's talk about the term, Dr. Uh, climate change. It has been exchanged in, uh, and quite often in the recent decade. And we have been dealing with climate change's effects um, in, of course, in modern times right now. However, um, some of which we are already witnessing in terms of these effects. Can you explain this to us, the, the term climate change? I mean, um, what does the word or the term even mean to uh, different regions all around the world? Thank you. Uh, my name is Rupa Kumar Kolli. I represent the International Viva Monsoon Project Office at the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, Pune, India. It's a pleasure to be part of this panel discussion and it's an honor. And I thank you for inviting me. Coming to the uh, first topic that was introduced, uh, I must say that climate has never been constant and it will never be. Our planet has witnessed many catastrophic climate excursions, uh, causing large-scale extinction of ancient life forms that we all know. But these were all natural and mostly slow changes spread over thousands to millions of years. However, climate change has become a defining issue of our times with increasing global realization that human action are resulting in unprecedented and irreversible changes in the Earth's climate within the span of our lifetime. We have solid evidence that the atmosphere and oceans have warmed, accompanied by sea level rise and a strong decline of Arctic sea ice and other climate-related changes. The Earth's average surface air temperature has increased by about one degree centigrade since the last century, with over one half of the increase occurring after the mid-1970s. The impacts of climate change on people and nature are increasingly apparent. Unprecedented flooding, heat waves, and wildfires have caused enormous damages. Habitats are undergoing rapid shifts in response to changing temperatures and precipitation patterns. Scientists have conclusive evidence that recent climate change is largely caused by human activities. From an understanding of the basic physics, comparing observations with models, and fingerprinting the detailed patterns of climate change caused by different human and natural influences. Greenhouse gases, whose increase is unequivocally attributed to climate change, naturally occur in the atmosphere. However, Human activities have significantly disturbed their natural balance, though through globally rampant and rapid emissions that cannot be quickly removed by the slow natural processes. The speed of the current climate change is faster than most of the past episodes, making it more difficult for human societies to adapt. The present level of atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations is almost certainly unprecedented over the past million years. There, there remains a range of estimates 
of the magnitude and regional expression of the future change, but increases in extremes that can adversely affect natural ecosystems and human activities and infrastructure are expected. There are three major ways in which global warming will manifest in terms of changes in the regional climate. Melting or forming of ice, changing the hydrological cycle, which has implications for water resources and river basins, and changing currents in the ocean and air flows in the atmosphere. And in particular, coastal regions and small islands will suffer severe impacts of sea level rise. So these are all part of climate change, which need to be kept in mind uh, for us to actually to deal with that. I think this can introduce the topic of climate change. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rupa, for shedding light on this. And we have to shed light on this because we are merely tenant on this planet. We have inherited these lands and we are going to give it and pass it on to futuristic generations. It is only common sense that we preserve it to make sure there is a functioning soil and climate that we live in. I'd like to move with my next question to Professor Mansour al mazrui Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, here is a question. I've got a lot of them written down here. Uh, you have published a number of studies related to the impacts of recent climate change in, uh, on a number of uh, meteorological uh, variables. Now, including temperature and rainfall, Professor, in the Arabian yes. Peninsula. Could you give us a brief summary on the results? Uh, okay, now uh, I have published more than 100 papers in uh, recent years, and uh, we get many results regarding the, the water and uh, temperature and other parameters. But mostly uh, what I would like to say about some comment of, of, uh, of uh, the, the results, uh, we have major finding, one of the major finding of these studies. This is based on uh, recent IBCC reports, CMIP-6. I'm also, I'm leading author in IBCC reporter now. And uh, what we found that in CMIP-4, uh, CMIP-3 and uh, CMIP-5, as well now as CMIP-6, which is the recent uh, data set for the global warming uh, and climate change. What we found over the Arabian Peninsula that the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula is going to increase the rainfall. And northwestern part of uh, the Arabian Peninsula will get a decreasing of rainfall. And this rainfall uh, uh, changes is really in, uh, in, uh, in agreement with what we found in some publication that we did for South Asia and for the Africa. So in Africa, the Mediterranean chose the route. And I remember with the WMO, we organized a workshop uh, in Morocco. And we found that the rainfall over the Arab regions in, in the Mediterranean was decreasing. And this one is including uh, Northwest of Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, Jordan and, uh, and uh, Palestine, as well as all the Mediterranean countries. Way, while uh, the Southern Arabian Peninsula is linked also to the Western uh, Eastern part of Africa, increasing rainfall, and also with the increasing trend of rainfall over South Asia. Yeah, that is uh, the main uh, relation of uh, rainfall, in fact. There is, uh, there is uh, another uh, important uh, aspect. It is the temperature. Why the, the rainfall is changing? Because uh, temperature is going to soar to higher level. Uh, our recent study we did over rainfall over GCC, we showed that uh, temperature could reach 50, 52 and more. And we have uh, some records uh, for uh, temperature of uh, Kuwait of uh, one area in the desert. It registered uh, for 54 in 2016. And Jeddah recorded 52 in 2010. So we are expecting that increase of temperature will be continuous in the future. And uh, this is why the, the rainfall will come, but uh, there will be dryness because of uh, temperature extremes. Yeah. 
Interesting insights and remarks. Thank you very much, Professor Mansour. We'll be getting back to you. I'd like to move to the next question, of course, to another uh, panelist who actually conducted studies on climate change in the Arabian Gulf region, Dr. Saeed Al-Salmi. Welcome, and thank you very much for joining us today. And could you tell us or elaborate on your own work and the trends in the Arabian Gulf region? I mean, what do they mean for the region's water security? Thank you so much. Uh, this is Saeed Sarmi. I work as a meteorological expert at the Gulf Cooperation Council Secretariat. And uh, I really support what uh, just uh, Professor Mansour has uh, indicated about the climate and the climate change uh, that recently happened and in the future uh, expected. I did some work in climate analysis using the meteorological station data at the Gulf Cooperation Council uh, countries and some of uh, model data. Uh, some of these uh, data series are long, uh, as long as uh, uh, started in 1942, like in Oman and in Bahrain since 1950, in Kuwait since 1963, and I have used daily, monthly, uh, seasonal, and annual data series. I worked in the trends uh, of the means and the extreme indices. And what I found that the general pattern of change over Arabia is warming. And for the precipitation is drying for the last uh, at least uh, three decades. And I can say also that the the area has witnessed the, long, the longest meteorological drought since uh, at least the last uh, two decades. Um, the other thing I found uh, which is uh, supported by literature is that the Arabian Peninsula climate has witnessed uh, a climate jump or a climate shift since 1998 the temperature goes up by at least nearly uh, 0.8 or uh, degrees Celsius, with a co accompanying with decrease of the precipitation. Okay. Also, there is a witness uh, a, 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 a variation of, of uh, the trends. For example, the mean temperature, including the mean maximum temperature, have increased in higher rate over the northern stations, while the southern stations shows less uh, increasing rate. But when we come to the minimum temperature, I noticed that over the southern stations and the coastal stations, the increase is higher rate over the southern and the coastal stations more than the other stations, which shows the influence of warming over the, the seas, the oceans, and the sea surface temperatures. The warm extremes are increasing while the cold extremes are decreasing. And finally, we notice also that Cat 4 and Cat 5 tropical cyclones show, shows increasing trend, which is very critical when we talk about the economy and the impacts uh, for future especially over the Southern Arabia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Saeed Atsarmi, for those remarks and those readings. I'd like to move with another question to Mr. Qais Aswedi. Thank you very much for joining us here today. And let's talk about scientific advances that integrate innovation. Play, they play a role, uh, a vital one, in combating various environmental changes. Now, specifically that of a warming and changing climate. Mr. Qais, what are the UAE's achievements in this field? And based on your knowledge of the regional and global experiences, if you could elaborate on that. Yeah, yeah. Salam alaikum. Thank you very much for having me. It's a real uh, pleasure to be here amongst these uh, distinguished uh, panelists, I have to say. Um, now, when it comes to innovation, of course, innovation has been a, a key priority for the UAE's government uh, in the last couple of years. And innovation, of course, is also part of, of our response to climate change, whether to reduce our emissions, our carbon footprint, or to adapt uh, to the impact of climate change. Now, one has to, of course, say that 
this region has been well adapted to its uh, harsh environment. Um, the, the desert environment we have, the high temperatures, the very low precipitation, water scarcity, and so on. So we are already adapted. And part of that adaptation is the, the innovation that the world has been witnessing uh, in the last couple of decades, whether it, when it comes to cooling uh, or um, water desalination. So, uh, but then again, with, with what we heard from the previous panelists, uh, as to the impact of climate change, what we project uh, in terms of uh, new challenges in the future, uh, these already harsh environment in our region might aggravate further. And uh, new technologies, new innovations, new ideas uh, have to come in place to help us adapt further and, and better and build resilience uh, to the impacts of climate change. So perhaps one key area is, is uh, in, in uh, for example, um, tackling uh, water scarcity is the rain enhancement program that the NCM runs. Um, the, the impact of this uh, program, of course, has been uh, witnessed and uh, we are hopeful that more and more uh, positive impact uh, this program uh, is going to have in the future, especially with the, uh, you know, lowering water tables uh, across the country, uh, reduced uh, fresh water in the in our aquifers and then with that of course um, of course that that happens due to human use we were using more of our groundwater for agriculture and so on but also due to um, uh, decreased uh, waterfall or say the maintaining a similar level of waterfall and then as well as that you have the increase in sea level uh, sea levels worldwide due to climate change and then you have an intrusion of, of, uh, of uh, seawater into the freshwater aquifers, especially the coastal areas. Uh, so there's a serious challenge when it comes to uh, rainfalls, when it comes to water scarcity. Perhaps another key area also that uh, the UAE is trying to, to pioneer and be an, an international leader in uh, is addressing um, food security. So food security is of course a real challenge for us in the region, again, given our environment and water scarcity. Um, and then we've seen the impact this can have and the repercussions of, of being uh, dependent on food imports for your day-to-day -day nutritional uh, needs um, it, during the pandemic. But we're gonna witness more of this perhaps in the future due to climate change, especially when countries that are uh, impacted by climate change. These are the countries which we depend on, uh, on our, uh, when it comes to our food supply. So if one country is impacted, perhaps you can go with another, but if more than one food basket is impacted, of course, the challenge can be great. So perhaps one example is vertical farming, agri-tech. Uh, we heard uh, in, in the last year the announcement, announcement by Emirates Airline and One Crop of uh, creating vertical farming uh, um, in, in the country. Uh, and we have um, the investment is, of course, a multi-million dollar investment. Uh, in an area of 12,000 uh, square kilometers, but equivalent in its production to 3.6 million uh, square kilometers uh, of the conventional you know, food production methods, but then saving at least 99% uh, of water uh, compared to open, uh, open farming. So there are a couple of other areas also of innovation, perhaps we can mention them later. Uh, that the UAE is, is uh, trying to implement uh, to prepare uh, for climate change. I see. Thank you very much, Mr. Qais for the, for those remarks. Uh, I wanted to go with a question with uh, Dr. Saeed Sarmi. I uh, think he will get back with us unless you can hear us, Dr. Saeed. Can you hear us? A bit of a technical issue, I think he will be back. Let me move on. Professor Mansour al mazrui we have a question for you. If you could tell us about the work that you have participated in the atmospheric influences on the region's climate. Now, in your opinion, what role can this research play in being better to prepare to face water scarcity challenges? Yeah. Uh, uh, can you repeat the question again, Osmat, please? All right. Uh, yes. Uh, now, the, uh, in your opinion, what role, uh, when we talk about, um, of course, your work, that you have participated in the atmospheric influences in the region's climate, in the Arabian Gulf's region's climate, what role can this research play in being better 
prepared to face water scarcity challenges? Yeah. In my opinion, we feel it's a need to have a common uh, platform to uh, study climate change in more details. Now we have a sc uh, scared, uh, scared, uh, scattered, uh, you know, groups uh, from uh, Oman, from UAE, from Kuwait, from uh, Bahrain and <coughs> Saudi Arabia and uh, and other countries. What we need now, actually, all the regional scientists had to sit together and put uh, for GCC a platform to build for uh, further uh, analysis of uh, atmospheric uh, parameters. Uh, for example, we need to have a high resolution of climate data. We cannot uh, do uh, this without uh, full collaboration with each other. So I recommend uh, for Dr. Saeed to have a platform for integrating all the activities of, uh, of the region. Now, uh, every country is uh, separate, doing its own uh, analysis and uh, the resources. Now we are having a supercomputer, for example. And uh, now uh, I don't think uh, in, um, in all the GCC countries, they have a supercomputer uh, that they can they'll be able to run uh, their models. Now we uh, go on resolution of uh, GCMs uh, from 300 to 100. Now, if an RCM can go up to five kilometer resolution, but you, you, you cannot do it for just only one region, uh, one uh, small country. Uh, you need to put, uh, do it for uh, the, the all over uh, the country, over the, all over the GCC. And many impact studies and, uh, and adaptation strategy must be built on high quality, uh, of, uh, uh, high quality projected data. If you don't have uh, the data, you cannot build uh, a trust on the, the future, uh, planning or adaptation or uh, even impact studies. So that is uh, my request. Hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Mansour. Dr. Uh, Saeed, what do you think of what the professor just said? He's calling for a collaboration. He's calling for, uh, for uh, he's calling for archiving and filing all of those researches, numbers and readings together to form a better understanding and form a better picture of what would the climate be tomorrow and how to avoid a certain scenario. What do you think of that? Well, I fully agree with Professor Mansour, and I thank him because uh, Professor Mansour is the, the director of the Center of Excellence of Climate Change in, in uh, King Abdulaziz University, and he has uh, an initi initiative to um, uh, establish or start with such, you know, uh, gathering and collecting all the efforts when he uh, organized the first, uh, the first conference on, on, on seasonal uh, climate uh, uh, over, over the whole Arabia. So Dr. Mansour, mm. Professor Mansour is well known with, with, with his, his, his thoughts and, and his works. And um, there, there, are, there are some, some uh, similar initiative but to a less extent is 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 less less uh, known and less uh, small size than than what Dr. Mansour is uh, Professor Mansour is talking about. Actually, uh, the, the other point that from what uh, research already done uh, in the region, there are a lot of work which. Uh, shows uh, consensus agreement of how the climate in the region has been changed and where are the climate parameters are going on. So uh, 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 the other point is why we, we should, why we should not start doing some actions, some real actions on the fields, on the strategies, 
to tackle, to adapt, and mitigate the climate change in the region. Uh, as Professor Mansour said, he has already published 100 papers in the region, uh, which is, uh, you know, um, uh, is is is, is a, a treasure for for the whole communities here, so that we should work on these results and start raising the awareness of these conditions and the possible future conditions. So, in one hand, we should yes work on science and build this archive, but in the other hand, we should also start working from whatever research has been already accomplished and the results are really shows some sort of consensus in the output. Dr. Saida, we'll be definitely giving back to you since uh, each and every member here, all of you, all of our panelists, they have their own insights and their own readings. So I will be getting back to you with a question. But right now, I would like to go to Dr. Rupa. Dr. Rupa, I want you to think of the following sentence of the following statement. A regional approach to the studies of climate change and collaborations to combat it is the advised way to go moving forward. How would you elaborate on this? Thank you. Actually, uh, I think uh, both Mansoor and Said have actually <coughs> provided excellent uh, foundation to, to this topic, uh, which I think I can build on uh, to bring more uh, specific aspects to it, uh, and also bringing the water sector into, into focus. Uh, as you know, climate variability and change uh, have come to be widely recognized uh, as the major drivers uh, to influence water resources, both in planning and management. So in that context, we need a, a more holistic approach, spanning the entire uh, climate water continuum uh, to help countries to derive optimal benefits uh, for adaptation and risk management requirements. And another thing actually Mansoor and Said also have alluded to is that uh, climate has no political boundaries. Uh, so the, there is a need for all the countries to work together. So in that context, shared climate challenges become acute on regional scales and we need to address them in a sustained collaborative framework through regional approaches uh, to carry out and communicate uh, regional assessments uh, of climate uh, in, in the past, how climate, climate has changed, how it is changing now, and what are the future expectations. So in that sense, a regional approach in generating climate information is, is a fundamental requirement, even if there is adequate capacity uh, in the national scale, because the countries share common regional climate drivers, and it is important to ensure consistency uh, at uh, national and subnational scales uh, to uh, to take up adaptation and mitigation efforts. So, in that sense, multi-country coordination of climate change impacts, uh, and also on transboundary hydrological systems. Uh, needs enhanced data and information share. Uh, in fact, in this context, the Arab region is, is fortunate that there is a pioneering initiative in terms of the regional initiative for the assessment of climate change impacts on water resources and socioeconomic vulnerability in the Arab region, also called RECA, in which Mansoor and Said have, have actually played an active role. Uh, this is coordinated by the economic uh, and Social Commission for Western Asia, ESQUA. Uh, this is a pioneering initiative that provides uh, a common platform for assessing, addressing, and identifying regional climate change uh, challenges, and which in turn inform uh, dialogue, priority setting, policy formulation, and responses to climate change at the Arab regional level. And Ricard has implemented what, what is called Arab Climate Outlook Forum, Arab COF, and also uh, a GCC COF uh, for the GCC, GCC uh, countries uh, for uh, regional seasonal outlooks. So the same mechanism actually can be expanded to cover regional climate change assessments. 
So uh, to sum up, actually we need a sound climate rationale uh, based on objective assessment of the current status and also future expected future states of the climate, uh, particularly our regional, national, and basin scales. Uh, this is essential for decision making in climate change adaptation and mitigation actions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Rupa. Now, I want to move uh, to another question, but uh, I will take a risk and ask it to Mr. Qais Asuedi. There is no risk on you answering it, Mr. Qais. It's just that we are running out of time. And we have another question that all of our dear panelists should answer it. Mr. Qais, in uh, which water resource uh, challenges does the Ministry of Climate Change and Environment classify as the most important ones to address at the local level? And could you please give us a brief on a very short one, on uh, the initiatives currently being undertaken. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, although I had an opinion on, on I had a, um, I was intending to weigh in on the discussion uh, just having, but uh, in any case, now when, when it comes to, oh. um, that, that's, yeah, that's fine. I was just going to say that, you know, the, the way we're doing it at the UAE, the way we realize the challenge that Dr. Mansour, Dr. Saeed and Dr. Rupa Kumar are, are, are mentioning is that we started with the adaptation work. So with doing, thinking of the risks that uh, current knowledge, current studies tell us about, and then trying to find ways to adapt to these risks. And then it's just making these studies relevant to policy and decision-making. I think th there's this missing link and this is what we're trying to do. And, perhaps bridge and maybe this can be uh, food for thought and, and maybe something we can discuss later uh, with, with uh, the panelists. And when it comes to water scarcity, of course, now, you know, the, water, the, the UAE and broader region, they're, they're part of the most uh, water stressed regions of the world, they're, they're really the most water stressed regions of the world. But then when it comes to water consumption, we were one of the most uh, water consuming countries. And of course, this has been enabled through technology and so on, but then this may not continue uh, with our uh, current uh, know-how and technology in the future. It can become more costly and so on. So the UAE back in 2016, the UAE uh, adopted the UAE uh, Water Security Strategy uh, 2036, and it aims to do three things. It takes an integrated approach, and one, uh, one is to reduce consumption. It's too high in the UAE, reduce consumption by 20% by 2036. Um, uh, increase the use of uh, uh, recycled water in, say, uh, irrigation, industrial use, district cooling, and so on. And the third is to move towards using, to, towards electrifying uh, water desalination. Again, water desalination is a very costly technology, uh, but this, this is the, the option we have uh, in, the, in the country, in the broader region. So moving towards reverse osmosis, electrifying the process, to reduce the impact, the environmental impact, the current desalination process is having on our environment, the emissions produced due to the cogeneration process. We produce water as a byproduct of electricity generation. So uh, there is an environmental impact, there's a climate change impact. Uh, so as part of the water security strategy, the target is to have 50% of our water production from reverse osmosis. As of now, we have al Tawira in Abu Dhabi by 2020. Two, uh, it's going to produce around a million cubic meter of desalinated water through reverse osmosis. And in Dubai, by 2030, we're going to have another million cubic meters uh, through uh, Hassian uh, desalinating. Thank you very much, Mr. Qais Suedi. And I'm just going to inquire about how much time do we have left exactly? Should that give us? Uh... All right, so we basically have. One minute left. Um, at all rates, uh, for our dear panelists, you have graced us with your presence. Uh, the, the very much insightful panel discussion, the outlook for global water security in light of climate change. I'd like to express my thank yous to all of our panelists, Dr. Rupa Kumar Kohli, Professor Mansour al mazrui Dr. Saeed Asarmi, and Mr. Qais Aswedi. You have brought the light to this virtual forum and to this panel session in particular. Thank you all very much.